Our victim is Stacy Collins. She's 45. According to her business card, she's a high-end matchmaker. Like millionaire matchmaker. Without the reality show. Or Pulp, that too. Defensive wounds indicate that she was attacked. We found her purse with wallet, credit card, and cash inside. But the thing that was missing were her keys. Uniforms are on their way to her apartment and office to see if our killer decided to use them. Yo, so apparently our victim was at a surprise party thrown in her honor last night by all the happy couples that she'd matched up. Where was the party? Oscar's Grill, 85th and 3rd. It's only seven blocks from here. Collins left the party just before 10. ME estimates the time of death between 10 and 11. Killer could have been at the party and followed her. Gosh, do you think a married person killed the woman who gave him such happiness, do you? According to his water-soaked wallet, the victim, Zalman Drake, the shop owner. His assistant, Eliza Winter, found him in the tank when she opened up the store this morning. Any signs of forced entry? Nope. You know, it is beyond me why people think this is entertaining. I see a guy hanging upside down in a water tank. I think you are a fool. Hmm. You know, the milk cans and the water torture tank, they were real game changers in the magic world. They were the first presentation of real life and death consequences. As the magician held his breath, so did the audience. Well, this magician would have had to hold his breath eight to ten hours if he wanted to take a bow. So you're saying between 12 and 2 a.m.? Looks that way. Particular hemorrhaging in his eyes indicate drowning. Failed escape attempt? Well, there's no redness around his ankles where he was hanging. Doesn't look like he struggled to get out. I have a feeling he was dead before he hit the water, but I won't know for sure until I get him back to the lab. That's him. Lady, what part of no cops didn't you understand? He's not a cop. Well, who the hell is he then? He's someone I trust. More coffee? Thank you. Tell me what I don't know about my mom's murder. Everybody drinks their coffee out of cardboard cups these days. Or those plastic travel mugs. But there's... There's something about the way ceramic warms your hands. It's weird, <laughs> the things you notice. I just got the long face from the doc. Lymphoma, six months. Sorry to hear about that. Every year around the holidays, they, they run that Christmas carol on local TV. When I was a kid, I remember Jacob Marley scared the hell out of me. Forced to drag that, that chain around in the next world. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link. I hid a lot of sins behind my badge. And now I gotta carry them. But your mother's case, that one was a ton. Why? Because you wrote it off as random gang violence when you knew it wasn't? I did what I was told. And I kept quiet because I was afraid. About a year ago, there was a hostage standoff in your precinct. You killed a hitman named Dick Coonan. It was a big deal in the papers. People noticed. Who hired Coonan to kill my mom? You need some context here. This thing started about 19 years ago, back before I ever knew who Joanna Beckett was. 19 years ago, I... I made a bad mistake. And that started the dominoes falling. And one of them was your mom. Everybody on the ground, help! Back away from the window, away from the window! You're hit. I'm fine, it's not my blood. One Lincoln 40, I have shots fired on 4th and Main. I need backup and an ambulance. One Lincoln 40, repeat your last transmission. One Lincoln 40, repeat. Yes. Dispatch to One Lincoln 40, repeat. Dispatch to One Lincoln 40, One Lincoln 40, are you there? One Lincoln 40. Please be advised, this is now a homicide. Victim's name is Jay Hickson. He won a cool 117 mil in the Florida lottery last year. And then he went on a serious shopping spree. Rookie mistake. 
Sounds like the voice of experience. Mm. Writing a bestseller in college is a lot like winning the lottery. Spent every penny of it in six months. Good thing I'm not a one-hit wonder. Single gunshot to the chest from the stippling and bruising. I'd say there was a struggle. The gun went off, vaporized his heart. Somewhere between 11 and two last night. It's a big gun. It's too big for that entry wound. This isn't the murder weapon. Told you she spotted first off. Our victim was shot with a nine millimeter automatic. The bullet went straight through him. We pulled the slug out of the poker table. I promised Damien we would get the guy that did this. Let me help you, please. Yo, Castle. He made it. Yeah. So I talked with Damien Westlake's friend, Charles Utley. He said Damien was distraught when he found his wife's body, but he also says that during their normally friendly game, Damien was unusually tense and aggressive. So maybe he shoots his wife, then goes shoot some hoops, injures his friend, brings him inside to establish an alibi. You know, Vicki Westlake had an argument with one of her workers on Friday. A worker who, and I'm just speculating here, may have some experience with nail guns. Maybe we should go run check out that lead before we rush to judgment on an innocent man. I'm sorry, is this you staying out of the way? This is me simply making a point about remaining objective. Is there money on the body? Not on the body, not in the cab. Everything points to him being popped for cash and car parts. Not everything, baby. Did you just call me? Ooh, did I? Anyway, you found something unusual. Not at first. Time of death fits a robbery. He was killed at 11.15. So specific, I'm impressed. His watch broke when he fell. Well, you shouldn't have told me, less impressed. Cause of death fits too. Looks like a nine millimeter to the noggin. But there's something that doesn't fit. His fingers were broken one at a time. Cabbies sometimes hide their money. Maybe they tortured him to tell him where the money was. All right, let's find out where he was driving and who he picked up before he wound up here. The victim's name is Sarah Cutler. Looks like she was killed last night and stuffed into a closet on set. Was she a part of the production? Yeah. Let me guess, the diva actress that everyone hated. Actually, Castle, she was a writer. A writer? Why would anyone want to kill a writer? Oh, so many reasons. Or maybe... Sarah discovered that Greek billionaire Mikos had invented a machine that could cause blizzards that would plunge the entire world into an ice age. Really? You're going to go with a evil weather machine? That already happened on General Hospital. Look, bear in mind, we're entering into a world of epic drama with larger-than-life characters, each one teeming with twisted secrets and personal intrigue. It stands to reason that the motive for this murder will be worthy of a soap opera. Castle, even in a world of epic drama, the motives are usually quite ordinary. Now, does that look ordinary to you? The victim with an ax in her back on the set of her own show. Hey. Why were there news bands up front? Because of who our victim is, Joe McCusick. Who? Juror number seven in the Lila Addison case. The Addison case? Seriously, what happened? He dropped dead during a closing argument. Laney thinks that he was poisoned. Heir to the Addison fortune is murdered, and during the trial, a juror is murdered as well. This is all the makings of a John Grisham novel. What are you doing? I'm uh, texting my poker group, calling dibs on this story. It was poison, all right. Pink lividity, the smell of bitter almonds. The test strip came back positive for cyanide. Cyanide? That is fantastic. Unless you're the juror. There were no puncture marks on the body, so it was ingested. That's an odd way to kill. Not for Nazis or evil dictators. How did he ingest it? Brownish stains in his mouth indicate he recently had coffee. Maybe it was in there. After he consumed the poison, how long before he died? No more than 15 minutes. According to the court clerk, Mr. McCusick arrived this morning at 8.37 and died at approximately 9.13. 15 minutes, that means that he was poisoned at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And who benefits from a dead juror? The defendant. Then we agree. I thought Terrific Nicks on the east side was number one. Uh, no, that's authentic Terrific Nicks. This is just authentic Nicks. This isn't terrific? No, just authentic. It's also not terrific authentic Nicks, but that's across the street. Well, what's the difference? The difference is this one has a dead body in the oven. Ooh, okay. That is really... Well done. Another couple of hours, maybe, but luckily for me, he's only half-baked. Male, mid-40s, that's about as much idea as I can give you. Based on the oven setting and the body's core temperature, I'd say he went in no sooner than 2 a.m. I'm afraid to ask cause of death. It wasn't the oven. The stab wound through the chest says he was dead when he went in. No sign of forced entry, but we're running prints on the door handle just the same. All right, run him on the oven as well. Who found him? Uh, Nick Jr. 
authentic, not terrific. No, I got no idea who he is. I mean, I open up the oven and bam, there he is. And who were the last ones here last night? My dad and me. Close around 11, and then I head up to Kadar Lounge, met up with a lady friend, and then we came back here to uh, grab a slice. And when was that? I don't know. 4.30. Where's your lady friend now? She's kind of throwing up a lot, so the paramedics had to take her in. Oh, but I kept the number. I, I don't think there's going to be a second date. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. You gotta be kidding me. Dad, these are the cops. You must be authentic Nick. The one and only. Nick, I have the proprietor listed as Ralph Carbone. Yeah, that's me. Everybody calls me Nick. Why? Because that's what everybody calls me. I can't believe those bastards put a body in my oven. I'm sorry, Mr. Carbone. You think that you know who did this? It's Sal that done this, along with the other two. Terrific Nick? Vinny Delfino. An authentic terrific Nick. Luca Sabellini. The thieves. They live off of our name, and they're not even real Nicks. I'm the only real Nick. And your real name is Ralph. Exactly. Hey, Lainey. Hey, who's this? Zach Lindsay, a standout on the UNY swim team. Or he was before he drowned. How does a champion swimmer drown? He had help. Burns? From a caustic substance. Someone put a rag to his face soaked in the stuff. He passed out from the fumes, then was dumped in the pool to drown. Based on water and body temp, I'd say between 1 and 5 this morning. And what was the substance? I won't know till I get him back to the shop. Who found him? Zach's teammates, when they showed up for 6 a.m. swim practice. All right, let's talk to his teammates, find out if anyone had it in for Zach, and let's figure out where they were between 1 and 5 a.m. I'm so sorry, honey. So tell me what happened. He was shot in the leg. Judging from the blood trail, I'd say the bullet broke the bone. He tried to hide, but... I found this in his pocket. He just flew in from Los Angeles this afternoon. What was he doing in L.A.? I heard he moved there after he lost his bounty hunter's license. I guess he was trying to make a fresh start. When was the last time you spoke to him? When I arrested him. Lainey, could I? Sure. Because our victim is a contestant. Death of a beauty queen. I'm no surprised it doesn't happen more often. Is that America's dad, Bobby Stark? What's he doing here? He's a pageant host. Oh, please don't tell me that you watch a sitcom. Family foibles? Half of what I know about being a father, I learned from watching that show. Hey, what's up? Well, according to Candace Ford, our pageant manager, the victim is 21-year-old Amber Middlebury. The contestants were rehearsing the production number. When they brought in the lighting truss, Amber was tangled up inside of it. Must have been a showstopper. Hey there, Perlmutter. Detective. Writer. Cause of death? Choked from behind with her own sash. Probably between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. How did she end up on the lighting truss? Near as we can tell, the uh, lighting truss was left on stage after yesterday's rehearsal. Killer probably thought he'd buy some time by dumping her on it and raising it up to the rafters. So whoever it was must have known how to use the stage for it. No, nah, the lift controls, they're on touch screen, pretty easy to operate. When was she last seen alive? Last night. Contestants, they all went to a dinner to honor Victor Barron. 10.30, the party wrapped and they were all limoed back here to the hotel. Amber used her key card at 10.43 p.m. to get into her hotel room. After that, she uh, wound up here. Detective, there's something you should see. A black sequin? Part of one. I found it in her hair. Okay, so the killer might have transferred it when he strangled her. Let's find out who had access to this ballroom last night. And let's also talk to the pageant manager. I want to see if any of the girls' outfits match with this sequin. Will do.